Welcome, welcome to Frontline Arts, Frontline Paper series of workshops on paper engineering. Today we're going to do low poly masks. Now this is the Frontline Fish, okay, on the banks of the river, the North Branch River in Somerset County, North Branch, Jersey. We're going to do this mask, the phantom mask. Okay, I'm trying to show you something where we can take you later on. But this is the mask that we'll be making today. This is one with beginning to start a mirror one. This is the classic, to me, a purist in frontline paper. Now remember, frontline paper is made of military uniforms and um, COVID medical scrubs, as well as some other beautiful things, refugee clothes that they wore in their backs when they fled. Um, so this is really cool. And this will be your first, by the end of this session, will be your first low poly mask. Now, you may be asking, what's a low poly mask? So, this is a low poly mask. How do we know that? Well, it's built with polygons, okay? And the polygons come from back in the early times of video games. I know many of you have been born since and can do way more things than I can gaming. But it was the issue of really cool video artists that were coming in as artists and then learning how to do it digitally. So what they did was they made planes. And you can see it a little bit better. This is our three, our three-faced mask, okay? See how that is built on all planes. And then the cool thing about this is that Inside, you can see the work. Now, some people might want to cover the work up. Personally, I am kind of like a punk aesthetic. I want you to see that it's handmade, that we will not seat our thumbs in today's world. Okay, but that's just mine. You could make that gorgeous. So I'll show you two more, three more masks just to kind of whet your appetite. Okay, then this is my Mad Queen. Okay, and notice that it has the beginning of eyelashes. It has more of this designer um, was able to make curves, which was an interesting choice. Okay, and then there are, there are, because what we're working with is, let me back up on low poly masks. There's a series of um, designers, uh, low poly mask designers that have created using obviously um, computer programs to create the angles. And what it does is this mask today, um, Costas Natanos was, um, gave us the, the pattern. There are some, and each designer, which is very interesting, has their own quirks, has their own approach. Then we have a guy with 300 tabs, okay, which is really kind of the borderline where if you love niche projects, you'll have the winter to do it. It's a meditative gluing. If you don't like it, well, it's a good patience project. Okay, so see this? This is, this is where, the whole goal back in early video art days was how do you make planes that approach a circle? You know, how do you do the face? Okay, the cool thing is yes, the science, computer science of visual um, and the biology of vision has come together with computer science, the whole bit. So now we got curves, but they're all approximations. And that's where, where you have here which I love, you may call it retro, at which point I kind of cringe because it was kind of like cool cutting edge art when it first came out. But here, the, they're planes that are created by the folds. Here, man, he's put a lot of different folds in, and so you have a better circle. 
what we're going to do is you've already downloaded the um, Phantom Mask from Costa's uh, Etsy site. It's important that you pay the, I don't know whether it's $7.50 or whatever for the file, as a matter of principle, because it's his artwork, it's his intellectual property. The artist gets paid. Okay, so so when we when we ask you to start this way, because we haven't done it enough for me to go and say, can we have a group license? That's why you need to download that file. And you can download it as soon as you PayPal or, or whatever with your credit card onto Etsy. Then you can download it instantly. So print it out, okay? Make sure, though, and this is a major major trick okay because along with this there'll be straightforward instructions there will be tips and then tricks make sure you print it actual size not scale if what you're <coughs> excuse me and what you're printing looks like we're making mouse masks you scaled it okay it should be fitting mostly on an eight and a half by eleven page okay so print that out and come on back and join me okay you've come back with your printed printed um, patterns okay and you printed it actual size so it looks like this double check it with your ruler now we I always use millimeters centimeters in pop-up engineering because when you start to um, one it's international standard but two is I couldn't hold the 1 16th 1 32th 1 8th of inches and dividing it so when my son said ma you know just use <laughs> centimeters millimeters it changed my whole ease of doing it. so take your ruler on your page okay and then just measure out did you does your um ruler your straight edge show 10 centimeters you know 100 um, milliliters on this page that's your gauge to always check to see whether um, you are printing it actual let's I'm gonna ask you to put on your favorite playlist an uplifting uh, soothing grounding. Now you don't have to be listening to astral orbs in the cosmos. Um, but you need to be able to, or I invite you to, approach this as a meditative craft. As a, I mean, I learned in, um, I was part of a Dharma art um, Sangha community. And we would go, before we would start a project, we would go and meditate for 10 minutes. Okay, it's, it's really tough at first, but, you know, you learn to meditate. So then you're coming back, and what are your intentions? So, come on back, 10 minutes, all refreshed, and being ready to be with the paper, to be able to trust yourself, trust the process, even when you think that the designer's work is witchcraft, which a lot of times you say there's no way to do it, but you also then begin to trust the paper. Frontline paper is this amazing material that comes out of, you know, originated from when we were cutting rag, cutting out combat uniforms that were then cut or ripped um, and then put through the beater and made into paper, and that's what frontline paper was. And and now with the uh, the pandemic and COVID, we've started to do that with um, medical scrubs. Uh, doctors, nurses, aides have donated their scrubs where they were rescuing people, and people were dying in their arms. They too made paper out of it. We've also done uh, firemen and um, refugees and the migration. Let's approach this first. What are we doing? Masks have been with us, the human consciousness, since at least the Neolithic period. Masks are primal. We're, we're, 
we're neurally programmed to have the ambiguity. We are as mammals, hell, even um, seagull chicks, okay? The neuroaesthetics, our, our visual biology, our brain science of vision is we all focus on the eyes. So there's complex meanings of this. And now, I don't want to bash Walmart or big box Halloween shows or pop-up stores, but we create our own culture. That's again, we don't seed our thumbs. And so when you're making your own mask, you, the artist, are creating meanings. You, the artist, is then giving a gift to the wearer to create their own meaning. The wearer then, in community, creates a communal sense of meaning. And there's no one meaning. What I think I've got the initial approaches, and I think this is really important. This is not a craft. We're teaching, it can't be a craft. You know, you can set it up with kids and, you know, not necessarily go into it, but wouldn't it be cool if they could make this and then decorate it so it's their mask? What are they perceiving? And then also to be able to talk about it. In the um, VA, in the Veterans Administration Hospital PTSD wards um, and programs, we do a lot of mask making. You know, masks, what are we hiding? What do we feel inside? What do we what do we have going on outside um, what, when we feel what we feel inside? Um, what are our changing masks? How do people perceive us? Um, okay, so that's, that's, also, that's also on masks. Uh, the last part is, uh, okay, no expectations, okay? It takes 10,000 years, I mean, it's going to be 10,000 hours to be able to, to work up the verticality of a learning curve. You know, you got to embrace the suck. You're going to suck until you get better. And, and so we need to start celebrating our mistakes because it's a matter of learning that if you're not making mistakes, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> there are people that can see this and do it without making mistakes. But to me, it's a learning curve. Okay, and we embrace that learning curve because it makes us humble. Okay, um, so we're willing to suck and we have no expectations and we trust our paper. Okay, because the paper you'll find begins to go on this journey with you that it will crease and then it will come almost at the point of using the adhesive on it, it almost returns to cloth and then comes back. And it, it's very different than, say, manufactured cardstock, okay, that has its own nature. I mean, it's sturdy and that's great, but we're working with an art material here. We're working with an embodied energy um, in a material. And it's an art material, so there are segments. Okay, so let's start with you have your printed, your printed, um, oh, patterns here. You also have your mat board. I like 18, um, by, what is it, 18 by 24? Yeah, or 22, 24, I guess. Um, I get a, um, oh, healable or self-healing. I find that you'll see all the ratty marks because I do a lot of the pop-up engineering and use it a lot. I replace it maybe once once a year. And your first tool is a sharp edge, okay? I happen to like the, what do they call it, ergonomic um, X-Acto knives. And I always, and this is, life is too sharp for dull blades, stale bread, and soggy pasta. They always must be fresh. Okay, so that's one of my simple rules of life. At the beginning of every session, I always change my blade, okay? So I take out the old blade, and if anytime you guys see techniques that could be better, write it in the comments, please, and we'll start incorporating. One of the beautiful things about printmaking, paper making, is that it's a collective art. It's a social art, so we're always, each one teach one, we're always getting better in our practices. Okay, you wanna keep a sharps jar um, bottle, I'm using 
this. I could be using all my VA Bent Brain cocktail meds, but today I think I'm going to keep that private information. Okay, so put there, but the more we normalize the fact that we do take a cocktail of meds to heal, then, and everybody does, okay, not just veterans, all of us. So we just kind of like, maybe people with their kidneys also talk about it, but boy, we give them a lot more grace that they can talk about it. Okay. So, let's get back to the basics. New blade. Put it in. Now, watch me jinx myself. I've not been cut by this. Although, when I started all this, I um, started with a Kevlar glove. Okay, always. Uh, it's. I would also make sure that... Why do I use a Sharps bottle? Children. Make sure, make sure that this is out of the reach of children and pets. Um, so if one drops, you got to cease, cease work and go find it. So you have your sharp, fresh blade. You've got a, a um, I think it's a 0.5 uh, millimeter extra fine um, pen. I like Uniball uh, Vision Elite. That's just my preference. Got no, you, you use your own. This is not a commercial plug. I'm just showing you what I do um, as what I've developed over the years and techniques. Um, now, some people might be cringing that, oh my God, you're writing on the back of the paper. They'll see it. Hey, but this is part of the magic. And I choose this because it's relatively um, non-smudging. And it's got thin line because when you talk about more complex projects each line and each fold is a millimeter okay and so you know you gotta you gotta be careful about it so I always do extra extra um, now I used a bone folder one of it and I don't have it with me but it's the boned um, circle it's a uh, book making um, a book artist tool where you score and then you can begin to fold paper this I found I had first tried then oh yeah I'll cop to it the Martha Stewart paper folder but the problem was her logo and brand was like right there where you hold it so you came out embossed with her brand so no 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 okay so, this is a Fiskar, I believe it's a quilting tool, five inches. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a clover. God, sorry. I found it in a um, sewing place, and it was like, oh my God, I can begin to use this for scoring and then folding like this. And since I've started doing it with my hand like this, I found it much easier than using a bone folder. So, this is a Clover um, Japan 5-inch um, printmaking, or excuse me, a quilt making tool. Now, I always use, when I'm gluing, I use um, craft brushes. I, I save my sable brushes for when I paint, and I'm particular about that. But for, um, oh, gluing, I always use a craft brush. I like the, um, what is it, a uh, half inch brush, and usually beveled, uh, but today I'll use Spielberg or whatever it's called. Okay, so that is, and you want a straight edge. Okay, I like, I like the fact that I have my millimeters here. You'll see it's kind of ratty because it's been well used, but I like having this, this rubber or so thing so I can put it down and I can score because a lot of times if you use something else you'll you'll be off a milliliter two mil excuse me millimeter not milliliter um, and this allows you to hold it down and score or cut towards you okay and we'll show more techniques now I use the bookmaking book arts um, uh, PVA, pH um, neutral. Little expensive. You can buy it online at, um, I, I guess, Books by Hand uh, makes it. I bought it. You'll see from, oh God, the dust, sorry. A um, couple of years, I'm still on the same bottle. Uh, I like this. Now, 
You could do other things. I noticed that um, the, the pop-up engineers, the best of the best, often use double-sided tape as their initial one. Um, so you have double-sided and they just, you know, keep it there and they'll tape in their tabs. Okay, also you could use this tape runner. I, I happen to like this one and I happen to like the permanent and you would just use that. Another, another thing is a glue stick. If I were not building this for strict, I'd probably be using a glue stick and a piece of card stock. Okay, don't, you're welcome to, but don't use the repositionable. I find them stinky and they really don't work. So, what's the worst that can happen? You mess it up. Okay, so you get another piece of paper, you print out the thing, and you trace it. Not harming anybody. Nobody dies today. So, you know, but don't use the reposition. Okay, let's look at the overall technique, and then we'll dive in, and we'll go through. Uh, we basically, we have seven different activities to build it. We have the downloading, which you've already done. You have it there and preparing ourselves to do it. Learning the overall techniques of um, the mask making. We have the uh, tracing from this uh, pattern onto the frontline paper. We have the marking of it where our fold lines and our tabs um, are marked. And then, uh, let's see, then we cut them out and then we score them, making them to be able to be um, prepped for the angle. And then you have your folding, then the gluing and the magic and delight. It's this wham and it pops up and all of a sudden you're doing something you never imagined could be done. And that's, that's the beauty of paper engineering is the delight of this magic that we don't usually use that is counterintuitive to us and all of a sudden we're back to being children with the suspension um, and the the delight and an innocence whoop of joy okay let me get down to the brass tacks again. the whole way that we do this and this is where everybody's probably looked at and built the peace crane. I hope you did. I know in, in the vigils of 9-11, we sat in Union Square to the, um, oh, all the memorial candles and the posters of the missing. And we all sat there alongside the drum circles and we made peace cranes. So if you've ever made them, you understand that Ooh, origami is pretty tough, especially when you start getting into these folds, but it is just mountain and valley folds, okay? With low poly mass and paper engineering, you never get down to this. I mean, maybe you can taking it up, but you don't need to be as precise. But you do have to worry about angles, but usually the designer has already given you the angles and all you gotta do is be able to trust the angles because these angles are counterintuitive um, to the way we usually approach angles. So you just gotta trust, and you know why? Is because it's figured out by a program, an algorithm. So, um, you know, sometimes when I'm designing a pop-up, I'll know where I'm going and I'll fiddle with it, fiddle, fiddle with it until I get to the angle. This is a much more sophisticated, well, it all depends upon what sophistication is that you're defining. Um, this is a sophisticated um, uh, working out of the angle. Okay, so we have the mountain fold, okay, that looks like a mountain you know it's a it's a tent okay and that's and there's two conventions of lines is the um, dash dot dash line which is for the mountain fold and then there's a dash 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 line which is for the valley which let me show you a good valley um, this is a mountain Okay, see that, like that? This is a valley. Okay, so it creates 
a valley, okay, like a V. Now, this is marked on the pattern, okay, in the convention. And you always want to check on the, I just did a, um, oh, I'm not sure who the designer was, but they had flipped the, um, oh, the legend. And, and that kind of threw me through a loop until I realized, oh, okay, you got to look at the quirks of the designer. But traditionally, mountain folds are, remember, we're making the tent, we're making the mountain uh, like, like this. Can, is that? So it squishes down when you hold it versus squishing it up. Okay, it'll become apparent when you're doing it. Um, but the blue uh, dash dot dash lines are for mountain, and the red lines dash 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 are for valley. Now, the whole purpose of the game, okay, whether we're doing low poly masks or pop ups, is we are taking planes of paper, okay, each fold is a plane, okay, we're adding a fold to it and we're gluing it to something, a target place, I call it. I mean, God forbid we all bear the burdens of our discipline, okay, targeting. Um, and then you have tabs, okay. These parts underneath the valley fold, these flaps, uh, let's see uh, whether you could see. Well, the flaps you'll, you'll see soon as we um, cut it out. These are the flaps. You glue the flaps on a flat target piece and then it holds together once it dries. What I like to do is because I do a lot of the pop-ups and I'm constantly learning new paper mechanisms from fantastic pop-up engineer teachers, you know, as they do the commercial projects, is um, I like to put them on cardstock. Okay, that way I can use them again until they get too ratty and I have to replace them. I also store them in separate little Ziploc baggies labeled. That way, if, if a year down the road I said, oh my God, that was an incredible angle and it did this effect, I can learn to incorporate it because I just go in, boom, I've got the instructions for the project, I've got the template right there. And plus it's easy just to lay it on down. So let's go and begin cutting. You always want to be doing it on a cutting board. You always want to be aware. You want to keep your fingers out of the way. You want to be able to be leaning your pressure down so nothing's going to slip. I also like it's something that in fact um, Lindsay was telling me the other week when we were making paper. I was kind of stumble stitching and it wasn't releasing better and she says you know if you did it faster and smoother it would release better and it hit me we must be confident in our moves okay because if we're just fiddle faddling around it's not going to come off so what I like to do I always like to cut our mark on the right side okay that's this is my right this is my left okay for those folks just because I can control it. I, I'm right-handed, I'm myopic, so most of the time I'm down like this, but I won't for this. Um, and, and it just is easier for me. Also, the other trick is we make one slice each, each segment, okay? Because these, these are not equal angles. So, you know, these are not right angles. This one, this two junctures here, that's not a straight line, okay? So what we want to do is we want to make, make your cut, okay, down. I pick up, I move my paper. Try to cut on the um, black line. Okay, and that's one of the things that you need to kind of like be aware of as you're doing it is um, to to always um, kind of trim your lines if you're seeing the blank, uh, the um, blank. 
feel free to put on in fact we're going to make a spotify station um a frontline playlist so you can turn on to different playlists of people so let me just be quiet and we'll we'll do this Okay, now, you cut it out. If you are like me, which you may or may not be, you may be higher evolved than I, and then this would be superfluous, but I sometimes, I don't know whether you can see in, you know, I'll, there's, I didn't cut all the way on the black line. You can see it down here. I'll go in and trim this off. It's not so important on this project, but later on um, in pop-ups, um, when you're trying to do a precision angle, it matters. Let's go back to technique. Okay, you see on number two, is there is a black line the red again was a valley fold the blue was a mountain fold you come down with these black folds okay that's a cut line i usually i'll show you how i mark it well i'll show you right here okay this is where's number two okay here it is let me so not talk with an exacto knife in my hand um okay so see, this is on cardstock, okay, with my annotation the way I will, and I'll teach you how to do that. It's much easier than, I don't like to glue on the paper. I, I find that that, that kind of stumble starts the process. So do you see this on number two? That's a cut. Okay, so every time, if I was doing this myself, I would have cut it automatically, but I wanted you just to um, learn this tip. And so I'm always looking at, okay, where are my cuts? So I go through and I'll cut them. Sometimes, if I'm going to be doing this often, okay, making a lot of them, I'll make a tiny little hole at the the intersection, the vortex, whatever you want to call it, so that I know I can put my pen in there to know the exact end of that line. Okay, so let's do, we had number two, we had number between one and five, okay, so that was two of them, and then we have 12, Okay, and we have a 9 and 11. And this is, and the language, okay, do we have any more? No, we're good. Okay, the language we use is, these are two pieces, okay, and you'll see on the top of the packets of the designer's templates, they say two pieces and, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot number 10, see? always double. So let me, let's take a break. Um, and the next step we'll be going on to is tracing. If you want to make it onto cardstock, it's much easier. Um, but I have traced it using um, paper. You just got to be a little bit more, um, oh, ensure that it's not slipping, but we'll deal with that. Okay, so you have your um, you have your two pieces of paper, okay, your two sections. What I like to do at this point, now, maybe you took my suggestion and you had um, pasted this onto a paper and then cut it out with the cardstock so you have a, something a little bit more um, sturdy. What I like to do, though, is I like to go through 
and then number my tabs and what types of folds. So I always have my template with all my folds and all my numbers. Okay, I do it a little bit differently than um, uh, some other people. And I do it this way just because when I've been making these large pop-ups, it just, I know my, my language um, of, you know, symbols, and it just, it's my way of doing it. Okay, so, M is for mountain fold, as always. V is for, um, oh, your valley fold, okay? And, and then, then C is for, do we have a C? Yep. Yeah. C is for your cut line, okay? And then, what I do on this specific part is I will put my target my target, uh, let's see, where is, okay. We're talking about how do we hold it together. We use tabs, these are, these are tabs, okay, they'll fold up, and we'll show you when we cut it out. Um, but I like, we've got our, our valley folds, and they will be doing, being glued on this. So I call this the target. Okay, and it's very nice just to be making art with targets versus destroying cities. So, I mark my target as well as my tab with the numbers, okay? The designers will always print the numbers, and usually they don't put it on the tab, but I find it much easier because when I have, you know, 20 tabs on a single section, I like to have my tab, my tabs uh, labeled. Okay, so that's that's the way I do it. I also don't mess with the dotted versus the dashed lines. Okay, I read them from what the designer is stating how they've indicated their legend, but I just use straight lines and then I mark: is it a mountain line? Or is it a valley line? Is it, this is a valley line. This is a valley line. And so I'll put on my, on my, um, above my, um, the tabs are marked there. Targets, target areas there, marked there. Okay, so let's, let's begin. Okay, and then hopefully, and if you have questions, please, please, please uh, write it in. Um, Oh, in the chat section, send us an email, and we'll get with you. If you have ideas, please share them, and we'll just make it better. Okay, so now we're going to go on to frontline paper. I want you to really hold this, okay? This is this amazing artifact, a process, and this is the threads of of challenges, threads that killed, threads that saved, that came together in this pulping and then was made by hands of whether they were medical frontline folks during COVID or veterans or um, dreamers or the migration projects we've had, the women of um, Oh, Canto Mundo. Um, so just feel it. Also, feel the the bendability. Okay, this is very different than standard copy paper. Okay, or cardstock because that's uniform. This is not. This and you know Walt Nygaard that makes most of our paper um, when it's not in a workshop. And, and with, along with Ron um, Erickson, they have created this way. And if you have a chance, go to the Montclair Art Museum um, for uh, the exhibition where a thousand or many, many, many um, of these sheets are hanging as prayer flags talking about the numbers of um, veterans that die by suicide. Let's go back to this. 
it's gorgeous, but it's not perf perfectly manufactured. That's the whole freeing liberation thing. But it is wobbly sometimes, and sometimes, now I've, I've chosen a, a thicker one. In fact, I ask Walt Nygaard all the time for his rejects because I find that they're usually thicker and stronger. Um, you don't want to trace your paper, okay, or trace your pieces, your pattern, on the edges, okay? And that is not just the edge, and there's not a right or wrong side of the paper. Sometimes you'll, you can see it, and it's really cool. One of the reasons why I like to take the, the rejects too, is it has a life of its own. You know, these are threads that came from the uniform, and I think, oh dear, I, I Walt would be able to tell me like this, but I, I believe this is Abaca cotton, as well as maybe Air Force threads. Um, so we have that paper, but we want to make sure that nothing is touching the edges. We also want to, and again, this is where you trust the paper and become one with it. You, you see how I'm holding it? It's just really tactile. It's, it's gorgeous stuff. Um, and you as an artist um, become one with it. Okay, so you can see where it begins to thin on the edges. Okay, usually I will leave, I'd say safely, I mean this isn't cut and dry, you, you as the artist begin to know your materials. I would say leave an inch edge along the way. So I set up my, my um, pieces on the paper. And I would go over there, I'd, I'd, I'd feel it, I'd see, you know, are we doing... Now, if you're doing a lot of them, let's just pretend I was making two masks at the same time, okay? And, again, intellectual property. The designer of this piece, my license when I bought it as an individual, was to use it for my own my own use, not for commercial use. My God, if you're going to make masks and use it, pay the artist, okay? Or get and negotiate with them. Okay, so, say I was making two masks. Say I had two kids, two friends, maybe I wanted two masks of my own, one for each day, who knows? It's really kind of cool, and there are computer algorithms that will be able to tell you with computational complexity where what's the proper configuration to get as many as you can on the page. It's a fun game, okay? I know. Some other people have other things to do on Saturday nights, but sometimes <laughs> it's fun. Okay, so... So there's, and there's ways you'll find, like all of a sudden this would have freed up, probably I would never, but I might be able to get this one over here maybe. You get the picture. But today we're just doing two. So all you needed was two um, pieces. Now, Can I ask a question? Please. Um, when you're not doing handmade paper, do you have to worry about the paper grain? Ah, uh, you know, I do when it comes to pop-ups, okay. okay, because the strength of the paper needs to. I have not seen, maybe it would have been easier on the thing to, to know whether, you know, that, you want to talk about grain? Oh, Here, sure. Um, this is Lindsay. <laughs> Hi. Um, so handmade paper doesn't have a grain because the way that the fibers are distributed when you um, manually pull a sheet of paper. The fibers are just intertwined, but in manufactured paper, there's a grain. And there'll always be like the side that uh, has like more give. So see how this side, when I hold it like this, it's not bending. But when I hold it this way, it is. That means there's the grain laying down the paper. And that side will be, do you mind if I like? Oh, please, please, please. That please. means this side will be easier to tear than this side. See, it's resisting me. And when you're doing books and stuff, you want your paper and your board grain to always be in the same direction. So that's why I asked um, when you're doing the mask if it mattered. Uh, because this is my, I'm learning all this too as I help film. So just thought I'd ask. But oh, if you're using please. our frontline paper, scrubs paper, you don't have to worry about grain, even if you're doing books and stuff. So, 
Thank right, you, Lindsay. Interjection. And in fact, take Lindsay's uh, tutorials, please. Um, we have them on the site because, one, she's an amazing um, teaching artist as well as an art teacher <laughs> on the front lines of COVID in schools. Um, okay. And and plus she's amazing at teaching. But also she, the precision of her work is really beautiful. So take those classes. So, okay, so we're not gonna worry about grain on this. Again, I like to use the um, Uniball um, uh, 0 0.5 um, meters. I find that 0 0.7 to be a little bit too large. I like to be able to see where each, uh, especially when I have the intersections, I need to have that as close as a point as possible. Okay, so now what I want to do is, again, I'm, I'm putting this such that um, it's easy. I also like to save paper, okay? Um, one of the things when I'm done with my projects, I bring in my um, leftover paper to make more, um, you know, to be able to rebeat them. Uh, but let's say, okay, I do it like this. I also like to then, I have less paper there, okay? If you could do it, it's great. It's a good practice. Um, I do it with the intention. Sometimes I don't do it. Um, I still bag up my, all the scraps and will bring it in to be reused. Um, so let me put this over to the side. I usually, this is me, I work left to right on the paper so I don't smudge it. Now, again, I cross up my lines. Can you, ah, here we go. Okay, I screwed up there. Okay, I missed my angle. I did, misread it. No sweat. I just scribble it out. And, you know, that's cool. I understand it. Okay. So, what I like to do with this, because it's really key that you don't move it around. Same principles that I always go down, and I like to go down at a 90 degree angle to me. Sometimes I'll get lazy and um, do it, but if I'm really, if I'm thinking clearly, I like to have it at 90 degrees to me going down again. Um, okay, second point is, as you begin, I like to begin at one of the angle intersections. Okay, look at, look at that there. There are two, Two lines here, two valley folds going in, okay? I I always just gauge it, okay, to know where those lines were. And you can eyeball it, okay? That's a trick, by the way. Um, <coughs> and it just helps me know when I'm going to mark it, where are my folds. Okay, so we go down again from the stop. Okay, now we're coming up here to an intersection. I make sure that I've done the um, the point to where those two go. Okay, so I'm going down here. I like also, we need to have um, the edges square, okay? Because instead of just kind of blowing around the edges. It's it's just easier to make them square and getting into a discipline of it. Okay, now, I don't know whether you can see me, but for this um, tab one and five, there's a cut line, okay? So I've already on the bottom traced, traced the bottom. So if I begin to move it, I know I can always line it up. And I've done the two, annotated the two angles there. Now, so I come to a, a cut line. I lift it up gently, okay? And again, I'm, I'm making sure it's aligned in the paper. And then I trace it just on there, okay? To make that, making sure and putting a little bit of time to make sure that I know where that point less. Okay, so 
I'll let you trace. You now have all the skills it takes to how to trace. And I'm sure you guys could teach me. Again, marking your corners. Okay, same way. Now, keep this template because there's no way that I would do anything until I mark my um, frontline paper. Okay, because that's, that's really the blueprint by which it does. Okay, so this, this one I was going to go a little bit closer. Um, okay, so let's, again, because this one is is a little bit flimsier and it's gawky. Okay, I'm going to start up here, okay, and do the top of it. Okay, mark my angles of my folds, okay. And then I'm going to come over, see that's, I'm going to come over here and do my bottom part. That way, I can always, if I screw up or I slip, I can always slot it back in to the bottom. Where do I have everything done? Picking it up shortly, looking. Okay, we did that. Now, one of the things is, see where I redrew it because it must have bumped? I gotta figure out what line is the actual line. And this is, again, my shorthand. Okay, this is what I found as I was doing the, the larger pop-ups. Um, and that is, okay, I've lined it all up. Everything is on the line, okay? Now, what line do I do that line? Well, there's about a millimeter, um, difference. So, it was this line here on the right. I'll just make a little arrow, okay, to tell me which line it is. That's my shorthand. It saves me then from trying to erase, and frontline paper is really hard to erase on. Um, again, if somebody wants to see the aesthetics of the inside of the mask, you know, it's just what the artist wanted to do. If I don't want to show it, then I cover it up. But, okay, so, now we've arrived at this. Now, this part is critical. Okay, this is where we're marking, okay? This is why I had you mark all the angles. And what we're going to mark the each line, okay, the tab lines, and they're going to be V. We already did the cut lines, okay, these C's. And I, usually I'll, I'll label, when I do the C's, okay, I'll label a C around them, okay, for cutting. Because that tells me when I cut out finally the section, onto front line paper, I know I gotta cut that. Okay, and I already double checked on the starts of my lines. Okay, so what we do is, again, left to right, okay, is we begin to line it up. See, that's why I, I had you make the, the lines. This is a half a millimeter thick um, pen, okay? So you have to gauge it. And again, I'm, I'm giving myself that time and I'm lining it up. Okay, and I've got another one here. Okay, now, let's look at this, just this one segment. We have two valley folds, okay? And we knew it why, we knew it because the designer gave us the, or three valley folds. Um, we have one tab, one target, 
and three valley folds on just on that one piece okay so we have no mountain folds and that's what i always start to look for where are my mountain folds because they're really kind of key because they're going to pop things and they're not used very often so if you leave them to the end if if you're like me um sometimes you'll forget them and you know again it's no big deal um, I know that when I was first doing it, I, I didn't trust the process, and, and so I had to refold it. So, always look for your, look and label your, um, and fold. Look, label, score, and fold the M mountain folds first. Okay, we got that done. Okay, the steps that I have completed, and you have also, and maybe you've blown past this and are out there wailing away, and maybe you're just rocking the mask on top of your head, done, already done. But what we've done is we've traced our templates onto the frontline paper, and then we've marked the, the lines, okay, the fold lines. Now let's now, and this is key, and you, you should be, you should be, pretty mindful and, and alert in doing this. No sweat that if you make a mistake, I always keep them close by so as I'm folding, I might have made a mistake and I can always see, oh, that's what I was supposed to do. So I've made my lines, let's start marking it. Let's look at this one, one section here, okay? Is I have um, my, my tab and this is a number, a six okay the way I make my my shorthand is I don't make these dashed and da dotted lines I mean designers do and I read from them as the original blueprint um, the concept part but then this will become my actual blueprint I will be acting on what I make as as my marks Okay, so I've got a target space over here, and we always glue two targets. So that's number seven. Now, the whole thing of the game is to find, ultimately, and to glue the tab. And all of a sudden, we have a V-fold here, and we've got a number seven tab. Okay, the whole thing, the whole game, is once we cut it out and we fold it, that number seven tab will go to that number seven target, okay? And then it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so let's begin, let's step back here. I've got all my lines done. I want to hunt for the mountain curves because again, as I said before, the mountain curves are what makes pops. Like this is a mountain curve, okay? That will make it pop. Not often used in this so it's really essential that you have them marked um so you don't forget them it's because they're they're usually i don't know a ratio to two to six mountain curves to valley folds as i like to do them first off and then i know where they are okay so i have on this section here m i make an m with a circle again just shows me where whereas I make just a V. Also, you have to flip the paper to score it for the mountains. Um, okay, so I have two mountains. Do I have any more of my mountain marks? No, we're looking at making our, putting our folds. Okay, so we had, we had valley, valley, valley. We have down here number four. Okay, tab, I've got a valley. Okay, now over here, I want to make sure that I know that this is my cut line right here. 
and that's so this is going to be the two uh, the two tab and this is going to be my two target and I kind of laugh at sometimes when I make my um, oh numbers upside down but if you do it consistency then you know consistently then you know what it looks like okay and that was a valley fold valley fold here we already marked the seven there okay what I like to do it on this mask it, it's not really important to do but it's a good habit because later on if you do a monster like this you'll need to know what's what's the top of it that won't be glued so how do I do that I put an X on the place where I know we'll have no tabs or targets to glue okay so I just put an X I got my mask hole here ah here's an M fold that I forgot to mark when I was doing the M's so I put my M there down here again I, I'm just kind of working I guess I'm working counterclockwise here um, but whatever you're doing just work in a circle pattern and then you check it by the circle pattern okay so I've got a valley fold here and I've got a three tab notice how I I just so that my mind wouldn't be confused I know I'm cutting that out so I just kind of made sure I knew I would be cutting out um, this hole okay so I've got a valley fold there let's work down here I've got a valley fold here okay now I've got a five a five um, valley fold excuse me uh, five tab valley fold okay I have a M fold and an M fold which already I already looked and I've got a one tab okay so and that was with a valley fold okay I've got X's over here X is over here but look I've got a three target okay notice there we build each section first and then we'll marry them up together to build the mask this three when we cut it we'll be gluing it to three because we look for the numbered tab and then the numbered target and match them up okay so I got three three now I'm going to check it six again I don't know whether I explained this convention before but it comes from artillery and when you're calling in targets or receiving targets or writing down targets is that well, I guess nobody writes down squad anymore but we whether we were taking out grid squares with nuclear weapons or whether just calling in um, oh uh, conventional we always marked our sixes and our nines because if I'm this is this is a number nine okay on this if I was looking at it upside down I might think it was a six okay so red leg which was the nickname for artillery um, was always put a line underneath your sixes and your nines same way with the sevens sometimes if I don't put a line through my seven the European style is I might think it's a V okay just that's a trick that's not a tip okay so let's go on to the next one again I'm gonna start match it up which which alignment I have just makes it easier I'm going to start again at the top and I'll, I'll work clockwise. Okay, so we did, we have now marked all those and we're ready to do the cutting. So let's, let's do a couple of tips. I'll talk a little bit about the tips um, of cutting then play your playlist.
you know, roll up the tunes, press play, and sit back and really get into it. Um, on the most designers put these on each page of their template for each section. The they'll make either a shaded or a colored part. Okay, and that is for the section. And and basically, right here it's pretty self-evident. We just have two sections, right? And we're gonna seam them up and that's it. But with this guy, I don't know, there was like 30 sections. Okay, so there are 30 different um, like pictures of the pumpkin. So what I like to do is I like to cut out those, put the number, just as we just marked the, the two numbers of the pieces, I will put them and I'll say left side mask. Okay, right side. Now let's let's highlight a moment left side, right side, wrong side, right side. Um, is what you're seeing on the paper right now is the inside of the mask. So even though this is these two pieces of the the left and the right side are the finished mask the outside of the mask okay left side right side i'm building so it's actually this is the right side and the left side i at the beginning when i was a beginner i tried to keep that in my brain it didn't work so all i know is i'm building the first side and i'll be building by this way now I can flip it over then and look at what am I what am I doing to step back. Okay, so a tip on I put my okay, that's my extra put my templates here. Always just to be there in case I have to reference it. Okay, do you have a sharp blade? It start with a sharp blade. If at any time it begins to get a little tough to cut, change your blade. Okay, these buy them by the hundreds, okay. They're, they're relatively cheap, okay? And again, life is too short to be using dull blades. Okay, so, and also, if a dull blade, one, it will give you nasty cuts. Um, two is, it's a poor artisan or craftsman that blames his tools, okay? So if it is, it's so much easier using a cutting blade. Okay, so now I have two sections. I could go ahead and just separate out these two sections. The way I like to do it, okay, is I like to do, I like to do it with the minimum of cutting. I want to maximize the amount of recyclable paper that I have. So, and this is again, just a kind of a principle because, you know, we make the paper, it's pretty precious. Um, and then we reuse. So I, I took it from the top of the paper. I'm cutting on the black lines, okay? Each time I'm picking up for each section, each line, I'm picking up the, the blade and I'm turning the paper. I always turn the paper to me. I do not turn the, the blade um, on it because these are all straight lines, no circle lines. Okay, so I'm going down here, making sure that I don't over, over cut on the intersection, intersection lines. Okay. Okay, there's a tip on this. Oh, let me is is we're going to trim up the lines that we cut over so we're going to trim off the the black lines but also in when you're taking this out you don't want to tear if 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 it's sticking a little bit like that don't tear it come back in with your knife okay and just release it uh, let's trim this up and again I trim at this point because I just like, I know if my mind is working on the exact same thing, 
is that I know that already intuitively I picked up something that I know needed to be trimmed because I saw it in the process. Okay, so let me look at what, where are my cut lines. Remember we marked them C. I've got the, the two tab and the two target. I've got a C line there. So I'm going to make sure that my point goes into the intersection where that C line goes. And then I'm going to go down, follow that line to the end tab. Okay, so it just makes a cleaner way of being able to do it. And I've got, so I've got one C line and I've got another one down here. Okay, so I've done that. Okay, so go ahead and cut out your, um, the number two uh, segment and then we'll get back together. Okay, so you have this cut out. Now, I, I, the way I typically do is I, I just make my C lines as I'm going. Okay, so remember we, we needed to do two or three C lines. So we got those, the cut lines. Okay, so now we've, we've cut it out, okay? The next step, let's put, we put, I, I always keep, I have, um, at home, I recycle the Amazon boxes to use as kind of like carrying cases, as well as I have my recycle box that's separate from the paper recycling that I, I know I got to bring back into the studio um, to be used for making paper again. So I, I also have to make sure that I've got all my little um, pieces of paper because it, again, it's not brain surgery. We're not doing, you know, things so specifically. But if I'm, if I'm scoring something, it might just jumble it up. So it's much easier to, to just make sure that your cutting space is without. So let's go into how do we score? How do we score? No, this is not a dating advice or whatever, or whatever those, the guys are the, uh, who am old, non sec whatever. No, this is not that type of predatory dating advice. This is how to score paper, which is our lifeblood in paper engineering. Okay, again, mountain, mountain um, goes, we're bending in, and, oh, excuse me, valley, we're bending in, mountain, we're building, bending out. Now, why do we score it? Um, let me just show you. If I wanted, let's say, this, let me just do this. Okay, let's take two two things like that and then let's just do it like that. Okay, let's say this is a valley fold and this is a mountain fold. Okay, if I were to try to put that guy over here. Okay, if I were to try to bend the line, I'm going to get a I don't know whether you can see it's not a very neat line because basically you have to coax the fibers into that fold okay if and that's why we score it you turn your marked piece towards you okay and I don't know whether this is towards me I'm looking down at at that part so all of a sudden now I know where it is and it's lined up and trust your eyes okay if you're off and you know you're going to be off then have some sort of mechanism or some sort of practice where um, you can do it so I had this one now again this this right here is a little bit tricky to know I, I guess we could know it if we but I would rather have know that 
this is my cut point and this is and so if I'm just using a, a tiny pin mark it won't do okay so how many M lines did we have on this we have one and two and three and four okay this M line and marking it is pretty obvious okay it's it's right there that's the um, uh, bridge of the nose piece okay so I know that I have to score from this point to that point. I'll get out this cool Fisker, although, or, excuse me, Clover Japan um, tool. And you'll notice, excuse me, if you're holding the tool, there's a little point, not enough to tear the paper, which we don't want to do, but it gives it a little bit of an edge that's going to loosen the fibers on that curve. So, what was I doing here? I was doing my M. Oh yeah, on the easy part. Okay. This is, this is a tip. Okay. I like to, on my, bo my, um, a marking board, or a mat board, you know, you have those marvelous lines. Okay. I like to line up my uh, straight edge with the lines. Now, I don't know, I'll do it this way. I usually don't do it. I, I do to, I'm gonna allow enough because this again, this has a top of this plastic, you know, whatever microns or whatever. And then, here, let me shoot it through my <laughs> armpit. Um, I'm going to start at the middle. I'm not going to start at the top or that, okay, on something so small because I could rip it. So I'm going to just kind of coax it and then I will do down one, okay. I might even just to make sure I would turn it and make it down. Now we flip it over and we hold it in the palm of our hand the base and with that and then again I'm not going to start at this corner or that corner because I could let me bump the paper and show you what what it could be and uh, well okay, let me show you um, okay if I if I went like that do you see how I just kind of I, I couldn't get it lined up and I stubbled it so mash it really and then I wouldn't be able to get my point so I would have to be working on coaxing it in which you could do I mean you know but it's easier just to make sure that I know I'm going to be working the flat point of this tool to make sure that it's got a crisp fold this is the part where this is a trick okay now some people will use, and not, not so much on something so small, some people will line up their straight edge and kind of, I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing, I'm kind of coaxing it with my fingernail to reach that midpoint. And then, then you would coax it again down and then you'd mark that point, okay? So, okay, what other M's do we have? Now look, I know that that's a mountain fold on there because a point is there. Again, we want to make our points pretty, pretty precise. And then I know that the angle is folded. So I don't need to eye that one and line it up. Okay, so I am going to do it so that it lines up. Again, I'm going to be working, give enough, there's, there is, okay, okay, did you see how, and that was a, a pretty, pretty good um, line up to the edge. Now, again, you're holding your fingers on the, here, let me, yeah, that's, that's better. Okay, I'm kind of, I'm keeping my fingernails in the actual score line. Then I'm coaxing it in, making sure again, we're worried about this point here. 
Okay, so I'm I'm just kind of like working my fingers up with. Then I'm going to make very sure I'm coaxing that point together. Okay. Because what I want to do on these, okay, and that's why I like to have full lines. Ooh, okay. Full lines is that I don't know whether you can see this, but that's a pretty clear line because that's going to hook the, into then the target. Then once you have that, then just do your do your V lines starting in the middle. Okay, and, and these I like to do these twice, but I do not start at either end because I'll end up, you know, kind of um, muddling the the tips. See, I, I kind of did that. I hooked up on that and, you know, tore that a bit. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and score the rest of your valley lines, and then we'll, next part is we'll get to the folding. Oh my goodness, yes. Rock and roll. Okay, so what we have is I'm assuming that you are at this point where everything is marked, scored, and folded. You may have had a couple of tough points. Uh, maybe when you were folding the small flimsy angles. Uh, maybe you, you did it too much. Um, and then also on the pointy, the three section points. Those are tough. Um, and oftentimes I will find myself having to coax them in. And um, this is just kind of the nature of the paper. Or, you know, like with all origami, but, um, you know, you, we don't have precision lines as m much as we would like them with frontline paper, but it almost becomes sculptural. Okay, so now we're ready to build it. That's why we came here today. That's why I talk about that the prep work for paper engineering and certainly for these poly masks, low poly masks um, and we're not hanging polys <laughs> and we're not talking about when we say low polys it's the low polygon um, mask making coming out of videos just wanting to clear that up in case you were thinking we were mounting polys um, in whichever way okay let me keep on going here um, I've, my, my, um, oh, paper plate with a little bit. I usually just use somewhat uh, like a half dollar coin. Do they still make them? I don't know. <laughs> but, but certainly bigger than a quarter, half. And I may or may not, depend upon how many faces, have to start a new pile or if this isn't completely dried up, would put the glue, more glue back on it. But I usually like to have the glue at the tacky part. The whole point here is to not kind of like do it pig pen style and glom on a bunch of glue thinking that it will be easier to do. It's more, this is when we get into the, the uh, book art, um, bookmakers, and it's always a couple of principles. You always want a thin glue, you know, a thin layer. It's better to do thin layers than glob it all on. Um, second of all, we glue the target, okay, versus this is a tab. This is number six, okay, is instead of doing this one, it's much, pretend this was a number six here, um, and I knew I was going to be putting it on there. I like to using a half inch because that's basically what the tabs are. Sometimes they get smaller, but frankly, when they get smaller, it really begins to be a mass that's a bit more delicate than we need to be making, at least in my point of view. Um, so half inch brush, I usually like to use an angle one and um, always painting the targets, not the tabs. Okay, um, so let's begin how cool is this okay so we have two sections if i had 
eight sections ready to go. Not the, when you get in the large pumpkin one with 300 tabs, you really build it by section by section. But when you're talking about these smaller masks, then I usually have all my sections ready. Then you play the game of jigsaw puzzling. We're just trying in our brains, trying to see how this would work. Well, we know we have to build each segment first. So I'm looking, oh, okay, here's where the eight will go. Oh, look, I got a 10 on a 10. You know, it can, you can make it a, a party game. I, I know you've got better party ideas than that. Um, okay, and then, so I know where I'm going to be building this internally. Okay, so if I build it, where is it going to connect? Look at this. Okay, so w when we build the section, we'll have the two sevens match up, the two sixes. Remember, we're always gluing tabs on the inside, not like this. Okay, so if you see something like this, hopefully you pick it up before it's, um, it's dried and you can kind of work it work it through hoping that you can cover it up okay so I'll have my twos matched my sevens matched um, and then all of my threes matched uh, and then how do I match then to this one again we're just trying to get a handle of what we're looking for so I see that there are going to be certain tabs so I'll need four or five or one um, Targets. So, all of a sudden, hey, look at this. Okay, I got a six there, I got a four, I got a five, and I got a one. Okay, so I know now where this is going to match up. But my brain says, and I don't know whether I can show you, boy, how the hell is that going to be matching up? This is where it becomes, it's, it's not intuitively obvious. Okay, abandon your intuition at this <laughs> stage of the learning curve. What is really cool is we begin to have the folds. And so, it's cool. So, let's take, we're going to begin, I like to begin on the lowest number section. And I'm going to be, how many tabs am I lining up? Three, three. I like to, on something as small as this, I like to paint my targets first. And I'm sure that there are people out there who can give me better ways to do this. Um, so please, I welcome any, any help. But I usually you know, make sure. And I start to try not to go over the line. I mean, you know, it will... But I, I try to make that... Okay, and I may have to come in and put more glue on, but at least I have my my targets glued. Okay, I had, what did I have? Okay, and the two. And I'm using um, cardstock underneath. You can use, um, oh, uh, you know, scrap paper too. It just sometimes the scrap paper tends to travel. Um, okay, so now, now why did we do all these angles? Okay, this is a valley angle. So first of all, I know it's a two and a two because we already did it, we glued it, right? Now, I'm going to tack this on with one finger, turn it around. Now this comes to the art part, and this to me is so amazing, the nature of frontline paper as a material. What we want to do is we want to have a seam that comes together, and we don't want to squash it because it, it's wet right now with the glue, okay? And, but we do want to coax it then seal it. So I'm trying to make sure that my edge goes to the top of it. Okay, so, and you could move it. You could, you know, it's really interesting how you coax it along. And this is where you, you begin to become one with your materials. Okay, so I know it's going to, 
and look I didn't do it over so those those folds align so that's pretty cool let's go on to the next one that was the two let's do the seven again tab goes on the top okay I tack it down I see okay this is basic but then I want to make sure that I'm lining it up I look at it kind of if you if you go in closely you can see where the fold will sit with the target okay and you just kind of like push it down um, making sure that you want to press it in but you don't want to be folding other like I wouldn't want to deform that fold so I'm just kind of pressing it in I haven't really used my fingernails I'm using more of a tip I might use my fingernails over here I might also give it a test to see whether it's aligned okay so I did that one let's go over to another this is a V fold so again V is valley okay um so I go and this is interesting what's going on here this is where the M fold comes in and pops it up this is the magic of pop-ups okay so I couldn't have um, gotten this to work if I had just laid it flat but with these two mountain I've got some twist in, into it and a pop okay so I'm going to again this part because it is twisting you just okay you're hoping that you tack it you turn it over now comes the coaxing part of it you know I'm, I'm trying to coax it in seal it hoping also the corners okay seal it in not going over it okay my god and I've got an eyeball is this not cool or what you know and you can kind of then run to the bathroom mirror check it out okay you are now somewhat of a paper engineer of a low poly mask okay so bingo that's our first section what I like to do is build internally the section first go on to another section and build that so we have the glue drying okay um, before we start to stick it together and sometimes like this guy I had to walk away and same with the, um, the three faced you know there are times when you just have to let it dry and come back you know go and do something so what are we doing we're looking to build it internally look at this look 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 we have two sections of a mask now go back let's look at it okay that's why we have these things <laughs> okay for those of you like me that didn't do well in the spatial relations okay tabs when in doubt find your tabs okay just like what we did before we're going to have six four five and one do you see that but I could have done it better okay if I were to look at this and notice that ah okay of course it had to go that way because those are the two ears and you need or excuse me two eyes and you need a um a bridge of a nose six four five and one I'm going to glue the target size side okay I've got a point there so I I was I put less less glue on it so I didn't go over okay and this is in some masks you'll get a whole seam because what we're doing is we're creating a seam 
okay and then the folds of the seam the the tabs the tabs attach the seam the folds of the materials on both sides that's what then says is the seam going to bend up or bend in okay so we've got that now i often sometimes depending upon the the design i'll start in the middle okay with just kind of trying to gauge is it going to fit but soon i have to go on to the back side okay and turn it because again we're going to see it from the back side and then then if i know things are pretty much aligned i'll start from one side and go to the next so this would be like uh what was i doing i was working on the six and then working down to okay so i see is that uh okay do you see that little gap there you want it to be so i'm just kind of coaching it back over okay and i would coach it through okay then then i have this so again this is with that m fold is giving me my pop okay so i want to have this in and i've got a twisting action this is the moment hold on go back and make sure everything's aligned the way that you feel is the best that you can do because that's all we can ever do okay so the big reveal to yourself dum da da dum 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 wow you have made a low poly mask out of frontline handmade paper from military um, uniforms from or medical scrubs from um, VA hospital pajamas um, you know you can make from um, fire uh, fire department turnout coats to the shirt that you fled in so here it is now check your seams just make sure that nothing is coming off because in the big reveal you don't want it to break open it could it's happened to me run into the nearest mirror and then say i am a paper engineer and then here we are still working on engineering and the best way to attach it to your face okay it's been privilege to um, be with you this afternoon this evening even if we're doing this at midnight you know until dawn um, is we have a principle that we try to live by um, within frontline arts and, and certainly within paper making and print making is each one teaches one and we learn we don't hoard knowledge and and that what we're teaching is m with the intention that you learn the skills we coach you through the skills but then you make it your own because hopefully now you will never ever allow a loved one to buy a plastic mask at a box halloween score thanks